Chepsmith makes an overarm router which attaches to your uh, to your Mark V way tubes. Um, you can see it uh, right here. Now I've taken the headstock off of this one mainly because I like this tool so much I use this all the time. The um, the the router arm is really a tool that it's it's in a class by itself. Uh, those of you who have taken the academy from me uh, and come here know that I really don't pull any punches when I when it comes to recommending tools. I personally believe that the that the most important tool in your shop is room to work. Uh, after that, it's all a it's all a matter of conjecture. Uh, I don't try to sell people anything, and I'm not trying to sell you a router arm, but I am going to try to explain it to you. I really do think this is an undiscovered power tool. Of course, <clears throat> it's uh, it's kind of it's trying to explain it to, to somebody, and what it's like to use is like uh, trying to explain to uh, somebody who's. Uh, uh, who's never eaten ostrich what it tastes like and you think for a minute you think well it's kind of like a big chicken with an attitude that really tells them nothing you have to have something to compare it to and about the only thing you can really compare the the router arm to is a router table so I'm going to go back and forth between these two tools and uh, show you what uh, what each does and how it and uh, how it does it this so you won't think that I'm uh, too prejudiced towards the router arm uh, this is a router table that I built um, a while back for uh, my book uh, Woodworking Wisdom. Um, it, this is about the 11th router table I've made and designed. I, there was a time there where I was uh, couldn't make these things fast enough for the editors. Uh, they all wanted something with a, uh, a different whistle or a bell hung on it. This has some, uh, some very nice uh, features which you'll see as I begin to work with this thing um, that, uh, that make it much easier to use than most router arms. But you'll also see that uh, this has still got it beat. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's talk a bit, little bit about what each of these things does and uh, uh, then we'll actually do some woodworking on both of them. Um, yes, <laughs> I see you. Uh, Katie's hungry. Uh, we'll, we, I got one more of these to do and then we'll go. We'll go, I promise. One more and then we'll go. The... Um, uh, Good dog, good dog. The uh, no, I didn't. I didn't call you back. I can come play back. Lay down, lay down. Good dog. Lay, lay down. Good. Stay there. The router, the both the router table and the overarm router convert the the uh, a handheld router to a stationary power tool. Instead of moving the tool over the work, you move the work past the tool. Uh, the uh, the router arm uh, holds the router above the work. The router table holds it below the work. Uh, the 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 uh, the thing of it is is that because of where this is mounted and how it's mounted, you get one more possibility out of this. And I'll have to show you as soon as, if Katie will move. Sweetie, there you go. <laughs> this is the, um, this is the router arm. Um, mounted in a vertical position. But you can also take this and lay it down and route in a horizontal position like that uh, this is this is tremendously useful for some uh, some operations like tenoning 
uh, putting grooves down the edges of, of, of boards. Uh, it also, as uh, we'll see later on, is useful for making raised panels. The, uh, uh, you just can't do this with an ordinary, uh, ordinary router table. But for right now, for, for just today, we're going to, um, we're going to route with this in the, uh, in the vertical position only. And I thought what we do is we do two operations that you can accomplish on both these on both these tools, um, and show how they're done on each. One would be a joinery operation. We're going to make a mortise. The other one is a, a decoration operation. We're just going to shape an edge, and. Uh, you'll get a uh, sense of the procedures for both. Okay. Let's, um, let's start over here on the router table. Um, I've prepared a uh, a short table leg, and I've uh, marked uh, some mortises in it. You want to go to the close-ups there, uh, Drew, and and uh, there we go. You can see you can see that I've marked a mortise, a uh, half inch wide, about four inches long, on two adjacent sides. Now we'll we'll route uh, one of these mortises on the router table, and the next one on the router arm. Um, I'm going to take off the stops because I'm not going to use them on this one. The first thing we have to do is we have to set up the, the table so that um, it's the precise amount, or the, the fence, so it's the precise amount away from the, uh, from the router. So I need it to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to move, I can move just one side of this fence get it right there at three quarters of an inch. Lock it down. I've got knobs on either side to lock it. Now, when I, when I route this, I'm actually going to have to drop this onto the router and then, and then make, uh, make my groove. The, uh, the, problem, uh, the problem is, is once I do that, I cannot see my marks. So what I'm going to do here so I'm going to put this piece of wood on the table, and I'm going to take a piece of tape. And I'm going to put this tape right here in front of the um, of the work. I'm going to make two marks on this tape. First of all, I'm going to take um, turn the router bit a little bit. There. That's as far over to the left as the bit will shove that engineer square. Now I'll do the same thing. And that's as far to the right as the bit will shove the engineer square. What I've done is I've marked the width of the router bit on that piece of tape. So I know right where um, I can stop and start my cuts. Now, here I'm going to, I, if I do this side right here, I don't have any marks. So I'm gonna have to take a square and transfer my stop and start marks to a surface that I can see while I'm routing. Okay, we're ready, I hope. Now I'm gonna use a foot switch uh, for, these, for these routing operations. I like a foot switch because it, um, it lets you keep both hands on the work. I'll turn the router on. All right. Foot switch is working. All right.
Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, you to actually drop the work down on top of the bit, uh, and then feed it forward. Well, first of all, I line up the right hand marks, and then I line up the left hand marks. So let's try it. There. You can see that pretty well. I hope the um, uh, I've stopped and started the uh, um, the groove pretty close to, to, to where I wanted to within a at least within a pencil line length and um, so that uh, that's where I that's that's uh, uh, pretty good for a test at this point I need to start uh, routing deeper and deeper and deeper in order to do that I have to raise the bit if you want to go to the um, to the uh, wide here I can show them that uh, in order to change the depth of the router of the router bit, I've got a little crank here on the router, and I've hinged the table so that it fall that it uh, just uh, opens uh, back. I can take and I know that one turn of the crank will raise the router a sixteenth of an inch. Lock it in place, and I'm ready to go for the next part of the cut. Once again. I lower the board down, lining up my right hand lines and route until my left hand lines line up. For some reason, that wanted to jump there in the in the middle of that cut, but uh, but that's. Uh, you, I would continue like that until until the uh, until this mortise was as deep as I wanted it. That's the that's the procedure for routing a mortise on uh, on here. Let's go over to um, let's go over to the uh, to the router table. I'm going to line up to route the other mortise. Now, on the router table, let me show you here. If I can, you've got a lever, and this raises and lowers and and uh, lowers the uh, the router. If your if the lever is in a position where it's going to interfere with uh, with the router or hit the router, you can pull this, loosen this, pull it out, and you can change to any other place. It's a rack and pinion gear that can be positioned anywhere you want it. Right now, I'm going to position it to be as high as possible above the work. I've got a split fence here, so if I move this fence, I'm going to need, go back here and get a straight edge, I'm going to need a straight edge to lay across the fence so that I can, I can uh, line up both sides, both sides of it. Finally, I've got, I've got this adjustment, um, uh, I can bring this here so you can see it. This is this is. Uh, let's let me. Let's. Um, we're going to lower the camera here. But this is just your table height adjustment, okay? And by using the table height adjustment, you can you can adjust the position. Of the uh, of the uh, table anywhere you want it, so we're gonna t we're going to um, take this table out and simply now at this point I never even have to touch that square or do any measuring. I just bring my router bit right over my marks for the mortise and lock the table down. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yep, there it is, right between the marks. Well, actually, actually, I'm a pencil line off. No problem. I can adjust the pencil line that way. That's better. 
Okay, let's go back and, uh, and cut this. Now I'm going to, I don't have to do, uh, put a piece of tape on or do any other measuring. I do have to um, uh, plug this into my foot switch here, which I'll There we go. Now let's make sure that the foot switch is working. Sorry guys, I got the back to the camera here. There you go. Now, uh, feed is going to be is going to be left to, uh, left to right here. We've got to cut against the rotation of the bit. So um, glasses. Hearing protection. And there's my test cut. Okay, I've got the um, I started it here, stopped it here. Didn't use anything but my, uh, but my eyeballs to do that. Looks like I gotta go a little bit further this way to, uh, to uh, make this mortise long enough, but I'm right on on the other side. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, make several cuts here, going deeper and deeper with each cut. The, the uh, router arm allows you to lower it on this rack and pinion gear as much as you want and then you turn the knob like this and it locks it in place to change to check to go a little lower loosen by going counterclockwise lower tighten loosen lower tighten loosen lower tighten that's all I have to do in order to uh, do this mortise deeper and deeper if I want to stop the mortise at a precise location I have a depth stop right here You can see how simple that is. Uh, I've uh, I've cut that thing almost a half an inch deep now, uh, in the time that it took me to do an eighth of an inch over on the uh, on the router table. Let's uh, let's change bits for a minute. That's uh, that's the mortise. Now we're going to uh, put the shape in the edge uh, of uh, of this board. The um, I've got uh, two shaper cutters. I've got a a cove and a uh, uh, a uh, what what would that be a bead uh, so let's put the uh, let's use the cove over here and the bead over here now you're going to see here in a minute what it's like to change um, uh, the bits in uh, in both of these things let's change the bit in the router arm first or the I'm sorry the router table first. Um, okay, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just step out of camera for a minute and adjust one of these cameras on the router table so that Drew has can see it from two different angles. There we go. Okay. Now, in order to in order to uh, adjust this, I told you before, it goes up. I have a locking mechanism over here. Um, unlock the uh, height clamp and lower it 
until I can easily reach the collet, loosen the collet, Remove one bit, put the other one in, tighten the collet, go. And then I'm going to sight down the, uh, the table here. Let me show you a little bit so you can see it. And keep adjusting this until the cutter comes into view. There we go. That's about right where I want it to cut a bead. Let me, might as well remove that and take this back to flat after locking the uh, locking the height. Now I need to split this fence to get it around the, um, the cutter. I have a couple of uh, bolts or uh, wing nuts that I loosen in the back, pull this forward, Lock down the fences. Check. What I'm doing is making sure that I come. I, this this uh, bit has a guide bushing on the top, and I want the fence, the the plane of the fence, to be even with the outside circumference of the guide bushing. So there we go. We're now set up to um, uh, to make a. Um, a round over on one edge of this board. So let me return this so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, change plugs again. Now, because we're under the work, feed is going to be right to left. Now, notice here that in cutting this cove, uh, or this uh, bead, that I've actually cut away some of my, um, <coughs> my guiding surface. I had this thing resting flat on the, um, on the table, the one edge flat on the table, one face of it flat against the face of the fence. And I took away some guiding surface f that was both against the table and the fence, and this thing is now unstable. See that? I would have to press this up and tightly into into the V created by the fence and the uh, and uh, the uh, the table itself in order to get this thing to to guide properly. Now let's go over let's go over to the router arm now. Um, go back to uh, probably going to have to move some uh, some cameras around again, but. Uh, 
First of all, let's change our bit. I've got a straight bit in there. Sometimes it's it's a little it's a little hard to go from a machine that's under the work to a machine that's over the work because uh, that old adage righty tighty lefty loosey gets all turned around. <coughs> there you go. You see how easy it was to turn, uh, to uh, uh, adjust, or to, to change the bits without having to flip the table out of the way. Or what's, what's worse, what happens on most router tables is you actually have to kneel down, uh, do what uh, Jim McCann calls worshiping the router god in order to, in order to change the bit. Now, let me... Uh, Now we're going to cut a cove in the back end of this. Let me um, change the tables. Now I've got to, I've got to tell you, to be honest, that the fence on this does not compare with the fence that I made over here. This is a much easier to use fence, and. Uh, I am working on a jig that uh, for this that we should make the fence for this particular tool a lot easier to work with. Okay. Now I've uh, I'll uh, let me t take move the uh, table out. Once again, let me get a straight edge and see whether or not the pilot bearing is even with the fence. It is. Clamp that down. Lower the guard. And get all the tools off the table and we should be ready to, to make the cut. Well, not quite ready. We have to, of course, change the uh, the foot switch over. I like uh, I like these foot switches. I like them a lot um, for for routing tools and uh, scroll saw. They uh, they free up a hand, and uh, they're they're actually a great safety tool. You have to remember though when you're using when you're using a foot switch. You have to remember to, to um, when you're changing to bit, to turn the router off if it's, uh, if it's plugged into the foot switch. You don't want to accidentally step on the foot switch while you're changing the bit. Once the router is in, then you can turn, the, uh, turn it back on. Let's test it. Looks like we're okay. Everything is locked down. Oh, hearing protectors. Drew is yelling at me. Absolutely. Um, just a little, as, uh, a little aside. Routers generate very high frequencies. High frequencies are the most dangerous of all. They are. They. Um, their uh, effect on the human ear is chronic over time. They they diminish the hearing little by little. You don't know you're losing your hearing, but pretty soon um, you're saying, "Hey, what?" to everything. There you go. That's um, 
Here, there you see that I've cut a cove in the back of the in the back of the bead, and I did not remove not one millimeter of stock from either of my guiding surfaces. They, uh, the uh, stock remained stable. If I would need to make another pass, <clears throat> if I was if I was doing it on a router table, this would be my stock at this point. It wouldn't uh, it wouldn't uh, stand up at all. But uh, this, is, this is easier to handle, and uh, once again, I can see what I'm doing as I'm making the cut. So, if we go back to the, the wide, uh, wide angle, that's, uh, that's really overarm routing 101. Uh, just seeing what it can do in, uh, in uh, comparison with a fairly good stationary routing routing tool and as you can see in making the comparison there really is no comparison this is in a class by itself and I'll show that to you I'll prove it to you over the next uh, four installments thanks <laughs>